like I hinted at yesterday, I'm going to be doing the rear pads and rotors on the Jetta. I already had to get a reprint of my receipt so I can go pick them up right now. I thought for sure I had my original receipt, but I couldn't find it to save my life. And since I bought it in the commercial account, that caused its own set of problems. Now obviously the commercial account's based out of the Wego. But when I called them to try to look it up, they couldn't find it. I found out that's because I actually bought them in Endicott using the commercial account. So first I had to go to Endicott to get a reprint in the invoice. Now I'm in a Wego about to pick up the pads and rotors. Then I can go install them. Now because I knew I was going to be keeping the car for a long time, I bought the better pads and rotors, mainly because they had a longer warranty on them. Of course they don't keep in normal stock, so I had to have them special ordered in yesterday so I could pick them up today. I swear, it never fails. Whenever I get involved, something stupid happens. This wasn't a big stupid, it was just stupid. I managed to show up same time Brinks did, so I had to wait for them to finalize taking all their deposits so that way I could get my parts. Anybody who tells you life doesn't get interesting, you're just doing it wrong. Especially for what just happened. I had a guy call and order a part yesterday, and so he needed to pick it up today because that's when it would be in. And we're not normally open on a Saturday. As soon as I pull into the dealership and get out of my car so I can go see which bays are open in the shop, a salesman starts walking over with a customer saying, hey, this guy works in parts, maybe he can help you out. Turns out it was that customer looking to pick up his part. My manager was supposed to be in earlier this morning to get the part out of the cage, call him so that way he could come down and get it. Apparently he hadn't. So I ended up basically breaking into my own department to go get the part out of the cage, give it to him with a receipt because he would prepaid for it so that way he could be on his way. So I get the customer squared away, send him on his way, lock everything up, head back outside, and who do I see pulling in the driveway as soon as I get done? My manager showing up for the day. Now I left him a note telling him I happened to be here so I could work in my car. The customer showed up and I got him squared away, but I'm probably still going to get yelled at for breaking in. I was kind of figuring I would be till Monday that he would speak to me about it. It might still be till Monday, I don't know if he'll come out into the shop, but he is here, I'm going to be here. So we'll see what happens, but I'm going to pull my car in the shop now, get it up on the lift, and then start breaking things. I got my parts, got my wheel lock, got my coffee, got the car in the shop, let's start ripping and tearing. The important first step is to always remember to break free your locking lugs while the car is still on the ground. I can't tell you how many times I forgot to do this and I put it back down after it was in the air. Once you get that done, then you can set the lift arms and get it up in the air. Apparently I put them on last time with a bit too much gusto, so now I gotta use the breaker bar. I had to put it back down on the ground to do that. I got the wheels off now, taking a look. And the rotors look fine. From what I can see from here, the pads look good. So now I guess I'll tear them apart and look some more. All right, it took a little bit of doing, but we got the caliper off once I figured out which size wrenches I need. In case you're curious, it's a 13 mil and a 15 mil. One's got to be open end. So examining the old pads, and there is a groove in the center there. It's kind of hard to make out, but it is there. Not quite sure what caused that. The inside pad of the groove, the outside pad, doesn't seem to have it. But comparing to a new one, there's plenty of life left in these. I don't know why they said I needed them. In order to take off the rotor, I gotta take off the bracket. And to take off the bracket, I need to get to those two bolts. I gotta get them out. They're not exactly in the easiest spot to get to. The sway bar and everything's in the way. Plus, look at that. That looks like fun. Our friend the triple square bit has returned. However, when I bought the ones to do the door latch, I got the ones to do the calipers too. And voila, got the brackets off. Now we can get the rotor off once we remove this screw holding it in place. And before I continue, I wanted to come over here to the wire brush, clean the threads up on these. That's, you know, it's not required, but I have it and it'll make things go back together easier.
Now we just take our T30 Stark spit, put it up into the hole, rotate it out, and soon we'll be done. We just grab the rotor, pull her off, and take a look. Oh, well, there's that groove. It wasn't doing anything any favors. Then we come over, grab one of our new high carbon formulation rotors, take it out of the package, and put it on. That used to look like this. Boom, when installed, already put the screw back in. Now the screw is by no means required, but it just it holds the rotor in place, makes things go together easier. My old hardware looks fine. I replaced them last time I did them. I'm just gonna shine these up as well as the bracket, smack it back on. So I got in a bit of a groove and just started putting stuff together without filming. But I still gotta do the other side, I can show it there. But now we're to the most fun part. To accommodate for the additional thickness of the brand new pads, the piston on the caliper has to be compressed. However, on ones like this, it also has to be turned while it's compressed, which requires a special tool. Well, it doesn't require it, but it makes life so much easier. You pick the correct size adapter, put it on the end of this piece, put it against this side of the caliper, and you just turn this to compress it. Okay, so I might have skipped a few steps again. That side's all done. And this side's all torn apart. This is the passenger side rotor, which at first glance seems fine. And you look at the back side, and holy hell. I guess they did need to be done. Okay, this is one of the steps I skipped before. To put the new pads in the bracket, you have to lube all the contact points, which can sit in the hardware. And you just take some of your preferred brake lube. A little dab will do you. And paint it on any contact surface. The pads are going to be riding on the hardware. And once you've got all your surfaces painted, take your pads and they should slide right into the hardware, no problem. With the new pads installed, just take it over to the car and put the bracket back on and bolt it in. To show how this tool works, as you rotate this part, it compresses and rotates the piston on the caliper. With the piston fully compressed, there's no space. Just slide it back on. And just like that, both sides are done. Everything's all tight, it's all lubed, all replaced. All we got left is to reinstall the tires. Two quick important tips for when putting a wheel back on. First and foremost, always hand start the lugs. It's a lot easier to tell that they're being cross-threaded when you do it by hand as opposed to a tool. Number two is to torque them down in a star pattern, especially on the five log wheels. So, boom, 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 boom. Do that for all the wheels. And in the event that you have locking lug nuts, like I do, that require a special key, always do those by hand, not an impact. You'll strip the key. Now once you have the locking lug torqued to the German spec of Guten tight, which it is, and I just gotta install the lug nut caps. And these are just to make it look better. What I do is push them right on. And then we're done. Put the lift away, take care of the tools, and wash up. And then I can go home. Now, one last very important step once you start the car, before you pull it out anywhere, pump up the brakes a few times. The reason you pump up the brakes is because you compress the pistons as far as they go. So the first time you go to use the brakes, if you don't pump them up, they will not work like you expect them to, pretty much or at all. So if you've done everything correctly, the car should roll fine without any drag. You hit the brakes, you slow down like you should. And since my brakes were under warranty, I'm on my way to drop off the old ones so they can edit back my account, and then boom, done. Rear brakes fixed. In that short drive from work to AutoZone, you can see that that black coating has already worn off where the pads hit, and the rotors are nice and shiny. As much as I like the Miata, it's not turbo, but it's not diesel. Power! Just got home, and now I'm thinking that this 
caliper, or at least most likely the cable going to it for the parking brake, is partially hung up. Because when I went to walk by it, I caught the very noticeable aroma of brakes. And then I checked for temperature, and this is very hot. It should not be this hot. And just to double check, check this side. I mean, it's warm. I can keep my hand here forever, no problem. On the driver's side, I can't keep my hand here very long. It is just radiating heat. Like, I can feel heat a good six, eight inches away. Which means one of two things. Either the cable is keeping the caliper partially depressed at all times, which means the brakes are riding and keeping them hot, or I fucked it up putting it together. Both are equally likely possibilities. I'm hoping it's the cables, because I already have new cables on order, and Volkswagen will be doing that. And I don't have time to tear the rear end apart on this again. So I'm going to be taking the Jetta out again later, and if the brakes are still getting hot, then I'm just going to have to park it for the time being, until I can either tear it apart again or get it to Volkswagen and let them fuck with it. It just wouldn't be an episode of breaking things with Tater if something didn't get broken, or not fixed properly, or another issue was found while trying to fix something properly. So it's nighttime now, and it's still warmer than the other tires, but it is significantly cooler than it was earlier. There's still a faint aroma of brakes, so if I had to guess, maybe I didn't back off the caliper enough, and it's just wearing off the excess pad currently. It's Monday, it's lunchtime, we're back in the park. There's not currently a wedding occurring. Uh, and I got some updates from this weekend. I got a call from Barnes & Noble earlier today about the flux capacitor. Apparently it's considered a music item so they can't do a store-to-store -store transfer on it. However, they can ship it directly to my house. So I gave my card number paid for it. So that's gonna be shipping out. I don't know when that's gonna arrive, maybe later this week. As far as the rear pads and rotor on the Jetta, they're working great now. Uh, they're not getting hot anymore. Best I can tell is they were manufactured a little thicker than they're supposed to be, and they just had to burn off the excess. So since they're not rubbing and overheating anymore, I'm just going to leave them be for the time being, unless they get hot again, in which case I will tear it all apart and see what I did wrong. And finally, an update on the incident with the customer on Saturday. As of right now, at lunchtime, I, my manager hasn't spoken to me about it, so I don't expect that he will. But he does have a favorite game of waiting until the very end of the day after 5 o'clock to pull you aside to talk to you about something. So it can still happen, but I won't know till then.